coming up on this episode of Turp Vision. The Clary Smith Performing Arts Center kicked off its season in style. How can art management save the future of the arts? We visit one of the greatest collections of African American art in the country. How can art transform a local neighborhood? It's all next on Turp Vision. My name is Moriyamo Akibu, a senior in the Department of Theater, Dance, and Performance Studies here at the University of Maryland. Welcome to this episode of Terp Vision. I'm excited to share with you a look at some of the great work being done on this campus in the area of the arts. I'm here in the lobby of the Clary Smith Performing Arts Center. At this very spot, the Clary's kicked off its season with the Next Now Fest over 50 events that provided a showcase for the next generation of artists and audiences. For the first time ever, the Clarice Smith Performing Arts Center kicked off its performance season with Next Now Fest at the University of Maryland. The Next Now Festival is about building the future of the arts, and it's about exploration, it's about discovery, it's about having fun, and it's an exciting place to be here at the University of Maryland and at the Clarice. Throwing open its doors to the College Park and surrounding communities, Next Now Fest attracted students to its more than 50 performances, most of them free. I think it's really important that students experience the arts at Maryland because as a public university, this is a place where research happens. And so this is a perfect opportunity for us to welcome students to our campus and our community and to really deeply understand that at core we are a creative campus. Next Now is also an opportunity to bring back alumni, performance artists working as professionals and pushing boundaries in their craft, like Terp and neo-futurist Kurt Chan. It's cool for us to come back to a festival that's called this, Next Now. This show has been a really young, very vibrant, vibrant audience. I want to follow you, so <laughs> magical. It was 32 minute skits, and um, it was just like really wild and outrageous, and it was like nothing I've ever seen before. Like I did not expect it to be anything like that. It was, it was awesome. In every way, Next Now reimagines what artists and audiences know about traditional performances. Someone in the here named Kirsten. Kirsten. We invite audiences to participate in the process of creation. For instance, in the next Now Fest, be a part of the creative process. Join us on stage and try to sing. Usually you go to a concert and you sit and you listen to it and then you leave and you don't really have anything from real life to connect it with. One of the things that we like to do is to make that connection so that people feel more related to what we're doing and have you know a real energy and passion. Dog and Pony DC is a local devised theater group uh, who enjoys performing in unlikely venues. And so we have invited them into the Michelle Smith Performing Arts Library and turned the library for three days into a performance venue. We just inaugurated at the Next Now Fest a lobby projection project, and that's basically reimagining our lobby into an interactive participatory art gallery. Next Now Fest broke through traditional boundaries in art making and audience experience by being a hub of innovation and possibility. Next Dance and Subway Buskers, musicians at your dining table, and late night art explosions. An arts tailgate before a Terps football game and dancers bending through the air. Through light, sound, movement, and art, the atmosphere was electric. As soon as we bolted on the staircase, it was like no other performance I've ever had. I think the energy was super high and amazing, and I just want to go and do it again. 
The Clarice and the School of Theatre, Dance and Performance Study have an enormous investment in creating a space that's safe for students to actually take the risks to be innovative, where they can fail and they can fly. And having a space where they can actually receive feedback and show their new work and then grow it is a gift that the University of Maryland provides to us. This semester, we welcomed the DeVos Institute for Arts Management to the university. Under the helm of former president of the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, Michael Kaiser, the DeVos Institute has joined forces with Maryland to launch new programs and research projects that will help answer a fundamental question. What is the future of the arts? The University of Maryland prides itself on a robust and vibrant arts program. The Clarice Smith Performing Arts Center is one of the best arts incubators in the country. Programs in literature, art history, dance, music, studio art, and theater draw the best students from across the country. But the nurturing and training of artists is just part of the art world. Michael Kaiser, former president of the renowned Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts and founder of the DeVos Institute of Arts Management, believes one of the major problems facing the arts today is not the lack of great artists, but the lack of solid arts management skills. Countries spend a great deal of money training singers, dancers, musicians, um, choreographers, directors, but very little money training the people who have to employ these artists. And in a world which requires more and more sophistication of management, this is a serious issue. The fact of the matter is, is that most people running arts businesses have no formal training, unlike a lawyer or a doctor or a pilot that goes through a training process in order to get accredited. As a result, people in the field are hungry for guidance, they're hungry for structure, they're hungry for best practices. Since its founding in 2001, the DeVos Institute has provided intensive arts management assistance to over 1,000 institutions from over 80 countries across six continents. The DeVos Institute recently left its longtime home at the Kennedy Center and moved to the University of Maryland, opening new avenues for research and academic opportunities. The University of Maryland is a great home for the DeVos Institute for several reasons. Number one, the resources of this great institution that can help us amplify our work. Number two, you have this beautiful Clarice Smith Performing Arts Center, which is a marvel for performing arts and a great home for a lot of what we wish to do. And there's so much academic interest in related areas to the work we do, technology, diversity, um, education. And in each of these areas, we can really draw upon the expertise of the faculty and the passion of the student body. Joining forces with the University of Maryland will allow us to go much deeper in partnership with faculty and students. We look forward to developing these relationships and this is simply something that you cannot do unless you're inside of a context with uh, hundreds, um, in cases thousands of great thinkers. In close collaboration with university faculty, the DeVos Institute will embark on serious study of two pressing issues facing arts institutions, technology in the arts, and a topic near to the heart of former director of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, diversity in the arts. I am particularly concerned about the future of diverse organizations because they're so important for building new artists, building new audiences, and for their absolute contributions to our arts ecology. The university has also partnered with the DeVos Institute on an American Cities program that provides a two-year in-depth arts management training in select American cities. Beginning in February 2015, the program will launch in Baltimore. Now that we are situated at the University of Maryland, we can really address the largest city in the state, which is Baltimore, which has a wonderful, rich mixture of arts organizations of all kinds that face specific challenges, and we're looking forward to working with the staffs and the boards and the funding agencies to really address these particular challenges over the next two years. We provide guidance in fundraising, marketing, strategic planning, board development, artistic planning, and at the end of the two years, what we're looking for a few outcomes. One, we'd like to see stronger organizations, stronger leaders, stronger partnerships between administrations and their boards. But very importantly, what we're looking for is trying to help position uh, cultural organizations as problem-solving partners. The addition of the DeVos Institute to an already robust array of arts programs at the University of Maryland demonstrates the university's commitment to elevating the arts at the state's flagship institution. Plans are already underway for a series of seminars, fellowships, internships, even a master's program in arts management 
and at the heart of it all is a deep commitment to the value of art. The arts are important for several reasons. Primarily, they entertain and they educate and they inspire people. But in a college campus, they also give students an opportunity to flex their creative muscles, which is crucial for so many endeavors in this world. The David C. Driscoll Center for the Study of the Visual Arts and Culture of African Americans and the African Diaspora is the home of one of the greatest collections of African American art in the country, and it's right here at the University of Maryland. David C. Driscoll is regarded as one of the world's leading authorities on African American art. His groundbreaking exhibition in the 1970s, Two Centuries of Black American Art, was the first of its kind to showcase African-American contributions to American art. The David C. Driscoll Center at the University of Maryland preserves and celebrates these unparalleled contributions. When just decades ago, accomplishments of black artists were often overlooked. In the 50s, when I graduated, got my bachelor's and master's degree, I had not learned about one African-American artist, not one. I lived in Harlem, and all around me those artists lived. But yet, I didn't know anything about them. The end of the Harlem Renaissance, the beginning of a new movement and modern art, there was a singular individual that was carrying that entire lesson, that entire message into the world, and that was David C. Driscoll. It's an amazing story, and I don't think it's a story that could happen ever again because so many elements converged at one point, at one time, and he was prepared for that. An artist, scholar, and collector, Dr. Driscoll has also served as the curator for Camille and Bill Cosby's collection of fine arts. He was making the, these connections um, as an educator that a lot of people weren't making, and he was doing it well before um, it, was, it was trendy. He was buying works of art for the Cosbys before people bought black art. A true gem on campus, students, faculty, staff, and visitors have access to the David C. Driscoll Center for the Study of Visual Arts and Culture of African Americans and the African Diaspora, a center unlike any other University leaders underscore how fortunate it is that David Driscoll chose to house his library and personal papers here at the University of Maryland. I thought, well, this is where I've spent some of the happiest years of my life teaching, and I think it was absorbed by so many students from so many different places. So it just seemed like this was the right place. The center stands to collect, present, and document African-American art for future generations. At a recent opening at the Driscoll Center, leaders like College of Arts and Humanities Dean Bonnie Thornton Dill turned out to view 100 works never before seen together by Robert Blackburn. He showed that a fine artist, a printmaker, could be very successful. Some of the major artists across the color line came to him. In addition to the art gallery, special collections, guest lectures, and symposiums. Visitors to the center can discover the personal archives of David Driscoll and piece together a narrative of renowned artists in American art. You're seeing correspondence and Christmas cards from Langston Hughes, a man that I grew up, you know, reading and reciting his poetry. That's the thing about archives that's so beautiful is that everything in each archive is unique. As the Driscoll Center continues to attract researchers from all over the world, it also stands to preserve the legacy of Dr. Driscoll, who continues his work at the University of Maryland today. It's kind of hard to predict uh, where we'll be, say, five years from now, but I would hope that we would be able to say we are still doing pioneering work. It's not just this standalone institution. It really folds into the whole of what African American history is, what American history is, and why we should think that that's important. And the Driscoll Center is so important because David really kept everybody's name alive. He really made a real sound contribution to African American art history. It is not only a center where you study African American art or preserve or collect, but it's a place where you celebrate African American art. President Lowe has said that the future of our university is tied to the future of the surrounding community. 
Just one example is a project underway in the community of Long Branch. The vision? Art can have a transformative impact on our local neighborhoods. What can art do for a community in flux? That's what Maryland professors and students are showing in the diverse Long Branch neighborhood, just three miles from the university. Years ago, you would have had a different set of businesses there. When that business district was created along Flower Avenue, you had a theater, you had a five and dime store, a hardware store, a dry cleaners, a small grocery store, everything anybody would want. The neighborhood seen quite a lot of changes demographically and in particular in a turnover in who owns the businesses. And so now you have a lot of Latino businesses and they're struggling to get folks to come to that area. The community faces even bigger challenges with the planned arrival of a Purple Line light rail stop, which would bring massive changes in commerce and housing. That's why two years ago, the Long Branch Business League started working with the architecture, art, and dance programs to preserve community history, brighten the business district, and reveal future possibilities. Art is the expression of your soul, so you have to represent the soul of your community with art. Architecture professor Ronit Eisenbach and art professor John Rupert started working with the Montgomery Housing Partnership and Business League to put together art installations and performances throughout the community, starting with 10 student-created pieces in spring 2013. We also put together a what was called a super block party that took place on the Library Plaza in Long Branch. And what we were trying to do with this event was not only to bring people from the community, but also bring people from outside of the community to see what was going on. There were over a thousand people that came. And as an architect, one of the things that I'm really interested in is how can you use temporary events, temporary art, temporary design, temporary performance to stimulate people's ideas about what's possible in the built environment. In spring 2014, she and dance professor Sharon Mansour from the School of Theater, Dance, and Performance Studies worked with dance students to create a performance installation at the Long Branch Community Center and inside the Miles Glass Building that was to be demolished. In September, they debuted their own work, Placeholders, with professional dancers as part of the Long Branch's Flower Fiesta, which celebrated four new murals along Flower Avenue. Sure, the reason we titled the work Placeholders is we felt the sense of being in place not only involved physically being there, but sort of the sense of how you emotionally hold a place, like in your memory or in your heart. What valuable memories or, um, or hopes or dreams that you have for a certain place, whether it's a place you own, whether it's a public place that you visit often. And as we were, have been working in the area, you know, people will talk about a certain business that had been in the current spot before, or hopes for, oh, I hope this new space comes. They danced not in one place, they danced through the whole neighborhood. It was fantastic, and they brought attention to the things that we've been doing. They created these bamboo ladders and they put it against the post where we had the flowers. So the attention of the people will go and look at the flowers. It was a fantastic journey. It was great. I'm so grateful to the University of Maryland for all the work they have done. For students like Edgar Alvarado, a lifelong Long Branch resident, it was a chance to put his passion for public design and photography to work. He's taken pictures to capture the essence of his community he now works as an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer at the Montgomery Housing Partnership to continue to improve local communities. I want Long Branch to be like a landmark where people like know that it's a place to be and a place to, to go, but I also want it not to be a victim of gentrification or uh, just a lost place. I, I want it to hold its heritage, its culture, just be a, a, a nice place to be at, but at the same time respecting history and just moving forward. Thanks for watching this episode of Terp Vision. My name is Moriyama Wakibu, and I hope you enjoyed our stories about how the University of Maryland is focused on harnessing the transformative power of the arts. Fear the turtle.